Hello and welcome to the second episode of our podcast series, where uh, today's episode is going to be about gender diversity and how to be an ally uh, in STEM. Uh, I'm Saket. I'm a second year computer science major. And I'm Liz. I'm a second year mechanical engineering student at UCI. And so I guess I'll get started with my experience. So I was in robotics club uh, in high school, starting my sophomore year. So I've kind of been um, involved in the STEM world for what now five years that's, that's a long time um and then there's definitely been like some certain experiences I can remember from being um a woman in STEM that just kind of like I don't know they've stuck with me for a while I for a little bit of context I was actually on a all-female uh, robotics club because I went to a all-girls high school um, and I remember like going to one of the competitions and um, our drive team was uh, teaming up with another drive team to um, the robotics competition. And, you know, we're pitching ideas, like strategies. And the other team is just like talking over us, you know, the guys just aren't listening and not even acknowledging our presence. So I remember that. And then we got like notes, I remember. It was like kind of weird, but then I think that really the whole experience kind of turned around. I was actually like, you know, in the bathroom washing my hands and this parent came up to me and she was like, oh my gosh, I see you're a member of Sembots, our, our team. And um, she said, I really love seeing, you know, representation from women in STEM. Like I love what I see. I'll be cheering um, you all on from the audience. So that was just like a great feeling. Okay. Like even if we're having a little bit of, um, you know, trouble behind the scenes, at least, you know, it's not an all negative experience. And but yeah, I think actually being on that all girls without a team helped me build my confidence a lot. And, you know, I felt really comfortable coming into college, you know, having this experience in, in design and, you know, CAD, a little bit of CAD, you know, having those basic skills that um, I could build upon. Um, but I do remember walking into, it was my first class, my first college class, it was a physics discussion, and I was one of four girls in a class of 42, and going from an August high school to that was a pretty jarring, it was like, I was like, wait, honestly, like, I was like, wait, guys exist, like, I, I was like, wait, what, this is kind of strange, um, but yeah, and then I think as, you know, my experience has gone yeah it's it, it's less jarring for sure um I think you know not all classes were like that there were some classes where it was you know 50 50 like there wasn't an obvious imbalance um but I think kind of actually as time has progressed from being in that all girls environment and having that very strong support system in high school of other um girls interested in them I have internalized some biases that I didn't like I never would have thought like high school me would have absorbed you know like I noticed like um when I so I was a team lead for a project my freshman year and fun story the project exploded and so I remember coming back to the lab and I was like okay this person did this this person did this this person did this okay go and then afterwards I was like wait like that was kind of bossy of me like like, did I, I should have, I should have, you know, been more gentle, but then I was like, okay, no, I was being a good leader. I, we had two days to get this together. It was a time for strong leadership, not like, well, who wants to do, you know, this, like, let's take a, you know, like, trying to, like, counteract my own bias, and then something that I also thought was really interesting that I noticed was, um, you know, when I was living back at home, when I wasn't in um, on campus um, my mom would be like why do you have makeup on your desk like, this isn't an engineer's desk like like why do you have a you know makeup mirror and, and I was like okay well why isn't this an engineer's desk like why um you know having like a feminine feminine um room behind me I'm like is is this gonna look bad is it gonna look unprofessional and I'm like okay wait why do I think that, you know, like they're associating um, 
So I think it's been definitely a strange journey. <laughs> um, but what about you? Like, Okay, so a lot of my experience comes from uh, when I was much younger, my sister, who was very influential to me, um, uh, my sister pointed out that I actually cut people off a lot. And that's just because I'm uh, a blunt person that thinks before they speak or that speaks before they think. Uh, and, and she got me to realize that uh, cutting people off is, is rude and, uh, and a microaggression. So I should, so I should stop. And I, and I, it took a while, but I, I tried to, or I've definitely improved on it a lot where now I let people finish what they're saying uh, before I start talking. And I actually, and that's helped in that I actually pay attention to what people are saying more. And I feel like that's, uh, and that's something that I never realized would, was a microaggression. And, and uh, another reason or reason that I, I find being an ally very important uh, is because I, I realized that when I grow up and I have a, a kid, I would like them to join or to pursue whatever field that they wanted to pursue. And I realized that as Asian Americans, we, we wouldn't have, we're kind of already um, overrepresented in STEM to some extent. Uh, but, but as a woman, if I had a daughter, then she would have, she would still, no matter what, have to struggle with, um, you know, with not being welcomed as much as I want her to be in STEM. And I don't want my daughter to, to base what she wants to do in life based on whether or not she feels accepted in that field. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people think, oh, like, sweet, like, study women engineers, like, I'm, I'm not female, like I can't join, but like, I think it's a very common misconception. Like, no, we welcome everybody. Like, um, you know, everybody's support is needed and welcome. Sure. Well, that brings us into kind of our discussion of, you know, recognizing microaggressions and, you know, what they are, what we can do to counteract them. And also um, wanted to point out, like we're talking a lot about gender diversity, um, that is kind of the focus, even though there are definitely lots of underrepresented uh, communities in STEM, um, but these microaggressions and how to counteract them can definitely be applied to all um, underrepresented communities. So I, I just watched a, a, a TED talk and uh, about how to be a, a better ally by uh, Melina Epler. And I felt like a lot of the, those ideas um, were very helpful. Um, like one important quote that I thought was really moving was that allyship is understanding the imbalance in opportunity and working to change it. And I feel like it's very easy to, to do the first without wanting to do the second part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I mean, data even shows like more inclusive and diverse teams are actually more productive more innovative. Um, so it's not, you know, there's lots of benefits, obviously, number one being everybody being welcomed in um, engineering and STEM. Um, yeah, and then I think the first part is definitely, you know, start by doing no harm, you know. Um, yeah, and I think in the TED Talk, she talks about like, learning, unlearning, and then relearning. Okay, like, three different steps with, you know, by biases and microaggressions. Um, so microaggressions are like they're verbal or they can be nonverbal and, and they're usually unconscious um, and influenced by biases. Um, and you know, I think they can actually, even if they are small actions, they can go a long way into making somebody feel like they don't belong, they're not welcomed, they um, you know, aren't like, worthy to be there. You know, I've definitely felt that through microaggressions. Um, and there's a large variety of them, you know, like um, being interrupted, um, tone of voice, you know, assumptions. I mean, assumptions, I think a very wide ca category. Um, and, and I think the first step to, to really 
becoming a better ally is to start by not doing any harm. You know, that, that early unlearning and relearning process that Liz was talking about. Um, and so start to be a better listener and pay more attention to who's coming up with ideas or, and who's getting the work done uh, at a meeting, let's say. Um, and, and make sure that everyone is, everyone is getting their work properly represented instead of having someone just not speak up enough about their work and then you acting like, then you not realizing that they did that work. Yeah, and also I think it's important like language matters, you know, um, pronouns, you know, and then, you know, listening to the words somebody uses to describe their uh, ethnicity, disability, you know, so you know what to use. Um, yeah, I mean, listening and learning is just definitely key. Um, and, and small things like that can go a long way. And I think also, um, you know, stepping in and taking a very active stance also when you see somebody else um, doing, um, when you see a microaggression happening, when somebody gets interrupted, you're like, oh, like I actually wanted to really hear um, their idea. Can we, can we listen to what they have to say? Or, um, you know, like attributing like, um, you know, just to build off somebody's idea, you know, to, to give credit like you're talking about, very important. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one um, because because that also makes them feel like even though they were interrupted, that they were still being heard and that people are still paying attention to them, mm -hmm. which which is very encouraging, I believe. Yeah, and there's uh, definitely long-term actions, I think, that need to be made and in, in, in STEM, you know, um, it's definitely, I think the last time I checked it, uh, for the UCI stats, it was like, what, 26% female in engineering? Like, that's kind of, I mean, I think it, it, it definitely differs between majors. Um, but I was, I, I think that's a misconception I had actually coming into college. It's like, you know, that it would be 50-50, that we had made all this progress. And, and I mean, it's probably, you know, coming from that all-female background of, you know, strong empowerment. Like, okay, like, you know, and then, you know, facing reality, like, oh, like, we still have a long ways to go. And, um, you know, um, among all the different underrepresented uh, communities. Um, yeah, I think it's important, definitely, like, encouraging um, girls at a young age to get involved with STEM. I mean, that was, I think I got, it you was know, like eighth grade for me. So just having that early exposure to get them to spark their interest is, is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I guess also like developing a strong support system like SWE has been such a great community to like, um, you know, find people with similar interests, similar struggles and, and just, you know, reaffirms, you know, this is what I want to do. And these people are great and, you know, they can do it. I can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, finding a support system or like just any group of people that can support you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really great. Like even if, you know, uh, the group has a bunch of people who, who aren't actually in school anymore and are, are professionals, or even if the group has uh, people who aren't even in STEM, but people who still will be able to encourage you and, and say, yeah, you can, you can do it. You're much better than some of the other people in your class. <laughs> this, yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. So I think that closes out this episode. Thank you everybody so much for watching and make sure to subscribe. Um, stay tuned for more episodes of the podcast.